The R50 is without doubt one of the best if not the best budget hybrid camera currently available. And even though it may come extremely close to being that perfect affordable camera that we're all looking for, but it does have five major weaknesses that I think you should know about. But the good news is that I found fixes to each of the shortcomings, and I'll be sharing those with you in this video. The first flaw may surprise you, as it's one of the selling points of this camera, and that's the fact that the image coming off of this sensor is downsampled from 6K. Now don't get me wrong, because having an image that's this sharp is perfect for certain situations like sports videography. But for general purpose filmmaking, oftentimes it's too sharp and lends itself towards that digital look that Sony cameras have been known for. So if you're like me and you prefer a more organic and filmic look, there's a few things you could do. The simplest thing would be to add a black mist filter to help knock down that digital sharpness. You could also grab a vintage lens like the Helios 44M because they have certain optical imperfections that give the footage character which is hard to get from many of the clinically sharp modern lenses. The only issue with vintage lenses is that they lack autofocus which can be a deal breaker so a black mist filter is the way to go for most people. The next problem with this camera and every other RF mount camera is the lack of affordable high quality lenses. The problem is intensified with Canon's APS-C cameras because there's only a handful of RFS lenses currently available, which is why I recommend adapting Canon EFS lenses instead of using RF lenses. My favorite adapter for RF mount cameras is this drop-in ND filter system from Mica. In my opinion, this is the most useful accessory currently available for RF mount cameras. It allows you to use EF and EFS lenses while providing you with a drop-in ND filter, as as well as an optional black mist and CPL filter. This gives you so many choices in quality lenses. In particular, there are three lenses that offer extremely high quality at an affordable price. The first one is the Canon 10-18mm EFS lens. When considering the APS-C crop, this lens gives you an equivalent field of view to 16mm at its widest. This is perfect for vlogging, real estate, and wide landscapes. It has image stabilization built into the lens and costs less than 300 bucks. This is really your only choice if you need an ultra wide lens, as Canon hasn't made any yet for the RFS mount. The next lens is a little bit more pricey, coming in at just under 700 bucks, but it's worth every penny, as it may be the best APS-C lens ever made. It's the Sigma 18-35 f1.8. This lens can give you footage and photos that'll look like they came out of a high-end cinema camera. It's the perfect B-roll lens for filmmaking, because you're getting the equivalent field of view of a 35 to 50 millimeter and it has an extremely fast aperture giving you highly detailed images and that beautiful blurry background. Now if you're more of a long range shooter and need a telephoto zoom lens for things like sports and wildlife, I'd recommend the Canon 55 to 250 millimeter EFS lens. It also has built in image stabilization and costs just under 300 bucks. Canon hasn't made any RFS lenses that are able to match these three lenses as of yet. And even if they were to make them, I'd still prefer these EFS lenses because the adapter is giving you a built-in ND filter, which is impossible with RF and RFS lenses. If you're not familiar with what an ND filter does, it basically allows you to shoot with a wide aperture outdoors without blowing out your highlights. It's one of the most needed pieces of gear for both photo and video. And the next issue we have to overcome is the fact that Canon didn't include C-Log with this camera. C-Log is a flat picture profile that makes it easier to color grade your footage and to use cinematic LUTs. The standard color profiles are harder to color grade because the saturation, contrast, and colors are already baked in. To overcome this, you can download CineStyle, which is a free flat picture profile from Technicolor. Alternatively, you can use the neutral picture profile that comes with all Canon cameras, but you'll need to set the saturation, contrast, and sharpness down to zero. This will allow you a bit more flexibility while color grading and adding LUTs. And if you're not familiar with what a LUT is, it stands for lookup table. Think of it as a plugin you can add to your footage or photos that'll give you an 
automatic color grade. So if you want to get that beautiful cinematic look without spending hours color grading, you can download my Filmic LUT pack for only 15 bucks on my website. It includes the LUT that I've been using in this video called Teal and Orange Juice, along with many other cinematic LUTs and Lightroom profiles. And the last thing I want to tell you about is called the Canon EOS Remote app. You can use it to start and stop recording, change all your settings, and frame up your shots without having to get up and go behind the camera. It's also great for photos because you no longer have to use the timer and rush to get in front of the camera before the shot is taken. And it's a free app, but I'd be willing to pay for it considering how useful it is. Now keep in mind that all of the tips that I gave you so far should go a long way in helping you get amazing photos and cinematic footage. But no doubt, the most important factor is gonna be your lighting. And that's why I highly recommend that you watch this video next where I teach you exactly how I do my lighting. I left links in the description below to the Mica and D adapter, as well as all the lenses that I talked about earlier. I appreciate you watching to the end, and I'll see you in the next one. It's Fulan Creative, and I'm out. Peace.